YouTube, YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Trey back again, hit you with a video. Now this video right here is about an ex-football player named Lawrence Phillips, who basically had a very troubled life and who also, you know, found trouble wherever he went. And this was a guy who come from a single mother household, didn't never know his dad, even though he was named after the guy. And he pretty much just had a lot of anger issues and a lot of unresolved situations and issues from his past that he wasn't able to deal with a lot of misplaced anger from the way he was brought up from a childhood and i'm going to read a snippet from this story and i will give my opinion as we go now it starts off having stability from a young age can truly shape the trajectory of one's life which is true the tangible appearance of positive influence often will lead to productivity at an elevated age though one untimely has the decision to make specific choices for themselves. The thought process behind the decision making can be determined by one's prior past, which is very true, which meaning, better yet, if you have like uh, a good past, a good foundation, both mom and dad, uh, good schooling, good education, parents educated, you have a better chance of succeeding yourself and not having to deal with a lot of unresolved issues. Now. It is true that you have stories with children coming up come from single parent households and also they still be faced with all kinds of dilemma, all kinds of issues, whether they're spoiled or whether they're going through some kind of mental uh, challenges or whatever. But, you know, you have a better chance of making it in this world and succeeding if you have uh, a good foundation to stand on. Because remember, anything that's not built properly would not stand. Now, there are those who are unable to shake the demons of the past invariably strife and trouble will follow them wherever they go until it's unfortunately too late and we know a lot of people like that athletes in particular are often beset by these sort of circumstances many grow up with impoverished backgrounds others are raised in single parent households these facets do not help matters when maturing and growing in one's informative years habits are developed and thus are potentially carried on in later years which is very true also which means that Stuff that you do in uh, a past, in your past, it's like, because uh, humans are creatures of habit. You know, we are people of repetition, which means we repeat basically the same things each and every day we wake up. No matter if it's putting on your socks or if it's uh, fixing the same cup of uh, tea or coffee or whatever, we tend to stick to habits and things that we do. So meaning if you have, if you was in trouble when you was young and you was, uh, like a problem child, so they used to say, even though we don't hear that term thrown around much, you will carry on those same actions that you displayed as a child, whether it was rebellion, being hard-headed, didn't want to listen to no one, you will grow up into that, you will mature into that. So whatever you 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 are manifesting to be is what you ultimately is going to become in the end. Now, Lawrence Phillips is an example of such a case. Growing up in an unorthodox environment, Phillips continually scratched and clawed for everything he had. Though a successful football career gave him much joy, violent off-the-field issues derailed both his professional and personal life. The sad ending to this tale serves as an example of how negative influence in life can ultimately end your life. Now, Lawrence Phillips was born on May 12, 1975. He grew up in Inglewood, California, an impoverished and violent city within Los Angeles County. He lived there with his mom and had virtually no relationship with his biological father, even though he was named after the guy. His mom, boyfriend, physically abused Phillips with regularity. It forced Phillips to run away and stop going to school. At, age, at 11 years of age, he eventually found himself going back and forth between foster home and juvenile detention centers, just having a very rough young childhood. And I'm sure I'm probably be talking to somebody right now who has been through those type of things, whether you was in foster home or you've been adopted or things like that, even though adoption is kind of different than foster home because foster home, you might bounce around 10 places. Adoption, the only way that's going to fail if something happened to the people or, you know, if you can't be there no more. But most time, if you get into an adoption uh, home, you will end up staying there. Whereas a foster child, he might go to 5, 10, 12 homes before he's even 10 or 15 years old. Now, uh, ultimately, Phillips landed in a group home shortly after the fifth grade named Youth Villages. And a woman named Barbara Thomas took Phillips in at the West Covina group home toiling, after toiling around in a world of violence, neglect, and instability. 
Thomas was a true first example of pro uh, positivity in Phillips' life. He then went on to star as a running back at Baldwin Park High School, where Phillips eventually earned an athletic scholarship to the University of Nebraska. Now, this woman took him in, you know, uh, brought him into a stable environment and pretty much changed his whole way of thinking, his whole way of life, because he wasn't able to do that coming from where he was from, like uh, my boy Anthony Hamilton said, coming from where I'm from. So, so when he got a change of scenery, a change of neighborhood and different people, he's starting to see how uh, people are supposed to get up and be positive, be productive instead of being lazy and being slackers. Not saying everybody there is lazy and slackers because it's not true, but you have a lot of people like that who uh, have so much negativity around them to it's hard to just think positive, you know, and unless you get away from that situation or unless you're destined to become great, you know, you're going to uh, most likely wind up being in another statistics. And we now all know a lot of people like that. Some of us are kin to them also. Now, uh, Phillips' life had turned around. He then went on to start as a running back at Baldwin Park High School, where Phillips eventually earned an athletic scholarship to the University of Nebraska. Very talented. One of the best football players who ever did it. You know, he was a beast on that field. Now, Phillips had a rocket start to his career as he was suspended for his opening game due to a fight with a teammate. However, Phillips was able to turn things around in a big way. He rushed for 1,722 yards, which is a lot, and 16 touchdowns as a sophomore. Many viewed him as one of the best players in the entire country. Phillips was integral in leading Nebraska to the 1994 National Championship, and I'm sure anybody that watched football or from Nebraska 1994 knows about this guy right here. Now, however, off-the-field issues began to rear their ugly head in the ensuing year. Phillips pled not guilty to charges of disturbing the peace, assault, and vandalism only two weeks after the title game over Florida. He was accused of grabbing a fellow student around the neck. So here we go with these uh, unresolved issues from the past, rising his ugly head back up, his anger issues, where he wasn't able to deal with his anger properly, where he thought the only way of uh, getting his point across or solving issues or uh, problems was through violence, and that's not the way, you know, and it pretty much led him even more down a steep slope a steep, a steep slope excuse me now earlier early into his junior year phyllis would be tangled up into another situation that forever tarnished his career in lincoln the running back received a call one saturday evening after a september football game according to a friend phyllis girlfriend at the time kate mcewen was cheating on him with a teammate this caused phyllis to act in a despicable manner According to the police reports, Phillips climbed up to the third floor, floor balcony and entered the room housing his girlfriend and teammate was in. He proceeded to pull McEwen down a flight of stairs by her hair. Phillips had also bashed her head into a mailbox upon reports. One would expect this act to completely end his collegiate career, but the exact opposite occurred. So they're still trying to give him chances, even though he assaulted this woman, even though she was cheating on him, but you still, that still don't give you no right to assault her. So they're still trying to look out for this guy, even though we know they did it because he was very talented, but still, though, you got to take what you can get, you know what I'm saying, work with what you have. Now, Phillips pleaded no contest to charges of trespassing and misdemeanor assault. As a result, he was sentenced to one year's probation, received mandatory anger management counseling and therapy, and endured a six-game suspension from the football team. Phillips offered an emotional apology on an Omaha radio show. Though this incident didn't hurt his draft stock, it offered an ominous look into the into the rest of what will become trouble life for Phillips. After leading Nebraska to a second national championship, two championships, Phillips was drafted number six overall in the 1996 NFL draft. This served as perhaps the defining moment in his professional career as Phillips never was able to ward off significant personal issues. Before his first game with the Rams occurred, Phillips had another legal issue to deal with. Phillips was arrested for speeding with a flat tire and driving whilst under the influence. This became a major issue for the running back as he violated his probation dating back to his prior incident at Nebraska. Upon being handcuffed, he threw his championship ring in the dirt. After 23 days in jail, one would have assumed Phillips placing more of a focus upon football. However, it wasn't the case. Those past demons starting to resurrect and show their ugly head and come back. And let me tell you something. When, you, when you're destined for greatness and when you're destined for fame, it's going to be even more harder for you to walk that walk. You know, because you, you this guy right here could have touched so many people's lives, you know. So let's continue the story. 
Now, Phillips had a short stay with the Rams, despite starting the first nine games of his career with St. Louis. The Los Angeles native was abruptly released during his second year with the club. It's something incredibly rare to see, particularly when taken into account. Phillips' high-profile uh, per uh, performance. Reports surfaced around the party lifestyle Phillips had adopted. Team personnel had smelled alcohol on his breath, which they don't like. For those of you who play sports, you know that. On his breath prior to games on more than one occasion. Phillips bounced around multiple NFL franchises, Miami Dolphins, San Francisco 49ers. He even spent time in NFL Europe, the AFL, and the CFL, still trying to find his way. However, off-the-field issues continued to plague him. In, 90, in 1998, Phillips was charged with the assault and battery of a woman in a nightclub. He pleaded no contest to the incident, though the Dolphins released him as a result of the incident. Now he's back to square one. He also had behavioral issues during his time with the 49ers and in, his, and in the CFL. Phillips was suspended multiple times for conduct detrimental to the team. His professional career ultimately ended in 2003. After two years of laying low, a 2005 legal incident completely changed the life of his troubled soul forever. Phillips had been a volunteer assistant coach at St. Augustine's College in North Carolina. After a short tenure coaching, he returned to California where he began dating a girl in San Diego. He always getting in trouble with these women. The relationship between Phillips and the woman went sour in a hurry. He was accused of punching and choking her. Phillips fled the scene and headed north of Los Angeles, though it would not be long until the long, long arm of law had its proverbial clutches around Phillips. A week later, Phillips had found himself back in South Los Angeles. He joined a pickup football game with a group of all struck teenagers. After a period of time, Phillips accused the teenagers of stealing both his wallet and necklace. What happened next was absolutely frightening. An angry Phillips walked to the parking lot across the street. Sitting in his car, he proceeded to drive, to drive up on the curve of the local park, aiming for the teams. Phillips hit two teenagers before attacking another with his vehicle. The police did arrest Phillips, which began a very trying time for the running back in jail. When, when combining the charges from both vehicle incident and the one involving his ex-girlfriend in San Diego, Phillips was sentenced to 31 years in prison. 31 years now. Starting in 2008, he was convicted of domestic violence, vehicle theft charges, false imprisonment, and assault with a deadly weapon. Though now behind bars, Phillips' violence streak did not end. Phillips had become withdrawn upon his arrival in prison. As a means to keep in touch with happier times, he often would correspond with individuals from his past, which a lot of people do when they get in those situations like that. This, this included former high school coaches Ty Pagone and Tony Zane. For those of you who, who know about those coaches right there, very uh, popular, famous coaches, good coaches. Here's an excerpt of one letter Phillips had penned to Pagone in 2014. Dear Coach Pagone, we have been in lockdown about 80% of the time. You would be surprised at what these altercations are about. Nonsense. But when your world is this small, all one has to care about is nonsense. That is why I do not want any of these idiots in the cell with me. All they want to do is, is the drugs, make knives, and make alcohol. So needless to say, I have zero friends inside here. Not one person is in line with my way of thinking. Well, that's all from here. Pagan, I will stay out of trouble. I might have to endure some write-ups for refusing a cellmate, though. Better, better that than them getting me into serious trouble. He didn't want nobody around him. He had re grown very recluse. Now, prison had become too much for Phillips to bear. In a letter addressed to his mom in March of 2015, the former running back offered this chilling message. I feel myself very close to snapping. My anger grows daily as I have become fed up with prison. I feel my anger is near bursting and that will result in my death or the death of someone else. A month later, Damien Sowood, the cellmate of Phillips, was found dead. It was determined he had been choked to death. The following September, Phillips was charged with first-degree murder. At this point, Phillips had found himself in an absolutely hopeless situation. Because once you get that murder on you, it's hard. It's hard to shake it up off. You're trying to get out of prison with that, especially when you're already in there for separate other charges. And then you get a murder in prison. But he warned these people, though. He warned these people, you know. And a lot of people are not stable like that. So this is the final result. On January the 13th, 2016, Phillips was found unresponsive in his cell. He had 
He had a bed sheet wrapped around his neck and according to reports had a note taped on his shirt which read, do not resuscitate. Just, you know, he was, he was finished. He would not live his life out in prison. He would rather go, you know. Phyllis was 40 years old at the time of his death, which was officially ruled as suicide by the coroner's report. Phillips, led, Phillips truly led a tortured life. Years of neglect and heartache at a young age contributed to his volatile character as an adult. He's yet another, he's yet another example of a once promising athlete beset by personal issues away from the sport. And, you know, it's just, it just sad that you have this guy with so much potential and could have, could have reached so much people with the experiences that he went through. And, you know, by him not being able to deal with his past, not him being able to really trust no one because the only person he really had was his mom and the woman uh, that, that took him in and showed him a better life and that first got him and started in Nebraska. So this is a guy who basically, instead of trying to move him forward, he kept finding himself going back. Even when he was in the, pl the park playing pick up football games with teenagers, as he accused one of stealing his wallet and his necklace, and I'm not saying they did, but how he should have handled it is called authorities. And if they couldn't do nothing, just leave the situation alone. Don't get in your vehicle and run people over. See, he felt uh, he had this eye for an eye type attitude. When somebody do me wrong, no matter who they are, how young or old they are, I'm going to get them before they get me. You know, And if you mess over me, I feel you have anything coming to you. That's the type of mindset this guy has, and we ultimately see where it led him to. So I want you all to think about that situation right there today because, you know, we all go through situations. You don't know what these NFL, these NBA players and, and other people go through and what it, what it took for them to get there, me included. You know, so think about that before you try to uh, judge a book by its cover and before you really talk about somebody. Get to know that person's struggle before you talk down on them. And never talk down on no one unless what? Unless you're helping them up. That's all I got to say for the day. I want you all to think about that. If you, uh, matter of fact, uh, big shout out to newarena.com for covering this story. What a great story. What a great written story. But, uh, yeah, y'all go check that out and stuff. I'm going to uh, put the pictures in the video. If you like the video, push that like button. You like, subscribe. Till next time, stay blessed and be thankful for the life you have. And be thankful that you know that you can wake up every day and walk outside when you want to and have peace in your life if that's what you have right now. And if you do not have it, continue to seek it because it's your life. You know, YOLO, you only live once. So do what you got to do while you're here, while you're blessed with the time. Till next time, it's been your boy Trey. I'm out.